Hey guys, how's it going? So I've never really done a QA style video before. You guys ask me so many amazing questions over in the comment section, in Instagram. So I thought it'd be a good idea to compile some of those questions as a video and see how that goes. So without wasting any time, let's get straight to the questions. If I want to learn concepts through practical experience, but my day job does not allow me to do that, what is the best way to achieve that? Do I just start side projects using things like Kafka or microservices? This is a great question. And I think a lot of us face this issue issue where we feel like the technology is moving on one side and we need to keep up but we do a completely different thing in our day job and we feel like we're being left behind or we're not getting the opportunity to work on those. The first thing would be if you could ever build up to a position of influence like if you're a senior person or if you can work with other senior people and kind of influence them to adopt new technologies and use these technologies that would be great but like I said if that's not an option at all. Definitely working on side projects is the way to go. But I want to talk a little bit more about that because the reason to use things like Kafka or any other distributed queue or like a very scalable database or microservices architecture and all that is to essentially handle scalability. You want to scale, you want to have low latency, high availability, all that kind of stuff. But as a side project, that's really difficult to achieve. I mean, you may work on the most state-of-the-art things, but if you don't have the volume, you won't really understand the benefit of why you are doing those things in the first place. But I do think with all these cloud services available, it is really easy to at least learn these things and see how they talk to each other, how you can have a very decoupled microservices architecture versus something that's very tightly coupled and at least get to learning the concepts to a place where you do feel comfortable implementing them in real life. Would you recommend a monolith or a microservices architecture? Like with every software engineering, it depends. I do think that in the middle of all these scalable systems and uh, distributed systems and microservices architectures and all that, we do tend to completely overlook the benefits of having a monolith, uh, especially if you are building an MVP or if you're a new startup or you can't afford the complexities of a distributed system. A monolith is a great way to go. You know, like if you're a team of one or team of two and you're building a product that you need to demo to some uh, investor really quick and you're just trying to get the ball rolling, you don't have funds to hire 10 different engineers. You build a system that runs on your machine or on a single VM on the cloud. Everything's in one place, you build it up, it works, it's a good demo, and then you go from there, you build from there. I remember watching this talk uh, from the engineers of Dropbox. I think they were talking at Stanford, and I think even up until 50,000 to 100,000 users, they had two consumer-grade machines under their desks that was running an entire Dropbox operation, right? That lets you adapt, be agile, change things quickly, and you don't have to worry about the complexities and dependencies, and decoupling things are awesome, but it has all sorts of headaches when you talk about deployment, and you don't want to be wasting time on those things when you're just starting with the concept or an idea. That being said, once things become stable and you have some headcount, you do want to follow the best practices and look ahead in terms of scalability and the future. The general answer, if I had to give one, would be start as a monolith, but keep in mind that you, if you're successful or if you make it to a point where you have to scale, you'd probably have to move to a microservices architecture or, or whatever is the latest, greatest in scalability, right? Are you Indian? This is actually one of the most popular questions I get probably because of how I look, but no, I'm not from India. How do you decide how you want your day to be? How do you structure your day to be productive? Do you have any book or video resources? So whether it's my personal tasks or tasks related to my work, I try to use a very agile slash sprintish method, uh, if that makes any sense. What I mean by that is first, I try to look ahead a couple of months and see what are the big tasks I need to accomplish. For example, that could be travel somewhere or create an MVP for a project that I'm working on or things like that that are very vague and could be decomposed in multiple tasks, right? And then I set a tentative date for each of those. And then based on what those projects are, I'll take time to decompose them to smaller tasks, like for example, travel. It could be divided into booking tickets, packing bags, actually going to the airport, booking parking, you know, all the logistics related to traveling. Once the tasks are decomposed and I know when something's due, where in the timeline they fall, then each Sunday I will plan out the next week. So based on my availability schedule, 
things are due, what are our higher priority items, I will pull them out from the long list of backlogs and then slot them into whatever time I have available. And on the actual day, the idea is that I don't have to think about anything. I just knock them off and towards the end of the day, I'll do 10 different things that are very unrelated and out of context things, but you do get them done without having to use much brain power so that your mind is completely free to just get things done. When was the first time you started enjoying system design concepts at work? I think the first time I actually enjoyed system design concepts or even started learning about it is when one of my projects had to suddenly scale to a large number. What I was working on was building a testing framework, which usually had around a million, maybe 750 to a million test cases that needed to run every day. So we had built a framework around that and suddenly that produced really good results and everybody wanted to run tests on it and it was a very extensible framework so it wasn't limited to our product but anybody could use it so then suddenly the demand was around 200 million test cases a day and the difference between 750,000 a day and 200 million a day is massive and I had to learn a lot of things on the fly very quickly about scaling things and of course a lot of things broke a lot of things didn't work some of the things I designed was bad and you know that that's how we learned, but I think that's the first time when I truly understood the importance of scalability and proper system design concepts and why they are so important. Why the heck is this channel so underrated? I agree. So please subscribe, comment, like, share so that this channel isn't underrated anymore. <laughs> The next question is, how do you stay motivated and avoid procrastinations or get out of ruts? Motivation for me is like a weird one. I sometimes feel like it's a myth. For me, I don't really need motivation for things that I enjoy. What I'm doing right now, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying making videos, helping people out. So even if it's every week, it takes a long time, I just do it. When I'm building projects or working on things that I'm passionate about, it could take 15 hours, 20 hours, it doesn't matter. I'll do it because I'm passionate about it. There are also things that you need to do in life, obviously, that are not very exciting or that you don't really look forward to. How do you go about doing them? And that's probably where most of us look for motivation. And my answer, honestly, is I really don't look for motivation in those things. I actually acknowledge that I don't enjoy doing them and they are a means to an end and I just need to get them done. Like the previous example I gave you, if I want to travel somewhere, I look forward to traveling, but I really don't enjoy the logistics of it. I don't like booking tickets takes time to compare the prices you know deal with that kind of stuff but i just take it that if i do want to enjoy the part where i travel i need to get through that and that's i suppose my motivation but i'll be honest with you i don't really think of it as motivation i just think of it as things that i love doing things that i have to do that needs to be done to get somewhere there are days obviously whether it is just feeling depressed or feeling down or just getting tired in general like when you're working for weeks on end at a very high capacity there is definitely going to be a time when you feel low energy and you feel tired and you don't want to do anything again with the same thing like I said with motivation where I just accept it is I treat that as inevitable so it's not about when I don't feel like being productive or when I don't feel like doing anything, what do I do? It's more of a, I know that's going to happen and I'll be ready for it and I'll accept it. And sometimes it just takes me a couple of days where I sit and play video games, just watch the movies or other times, like I said, I'll travel somewhere or some other days we just sit down and sleep, don't do anything, you know. Are people over 40 more likely to get fired from debt? Is ageism a thing? I don't think this is true. I'm sure there are people that have had an experience that has lent them to believe that age was a factor in them being laid off. But I don't think that's generally true because as you grow older, if you have been progressing in your career, if you have been keeping up, if you have gathered the right kind of experience, you become even more valuable to the company because you not only know the code base, but you have so much experience that hiring some young person and training them to get 10 years of experience, for example, is extremely expensive for a company. So if you have the right kind of experience and if you have been progressing in your career, I don't think age is at all an issue. Where it does become an issue isn't really because of your age, but because of you not progressing, right? Like for example, say you started at 20 
and you've been at a company for 15 years and now you're 35. But if you started as software engineer one and you've barely made it to software engineer two, or maybe you're still at software engineer one, over the years, as you keep getting raises, because everybody gets some sort of raises, right? Your compensation and salary could become way higher than a typical software engineer one. Everybody expects you to sort of progress through your career to a point where if you're making a lot more than a level one, the idea is that you're probably already senior by then. So that makes sense, right? Like, but now if you're just level one or level two for 15 years and you're making double what a regular level one makes, it's kind of an odd state to be from an investment standpoint from a company because you cost a lot of money, but the output you're producing is at a very elementary level. And in that case, you may be asked to move on or at least progress through your career, one of the two. There's a subtle but major difference here because one is you being at a position and not progressing and the other one is you just being old, right? The second one is not true. Why did you leave Microsoft? I left Microsoft because I wanted to take one year off to focus on side projects, hobbies, and just personal development. I've been working for more than 12 years now. And if you've seen my other videos, I like to work a lot. So I realized that I haven't really taken much time off. So I decided to take some time off and just focus on those things. So yeah, that's that. How do you properly approach recruiters to get an interview scheduled at a FANG company? So this doesn't have to be FANG company. It applies to any company. If you want to approach recruiters, the best place I think is LinkedIn. Find a recruiter at a company that you are looking to work at. But here are the tips that I have. Don't just message things like, hi, good morning, and then wait for the response. You're just wasting their time. They're there to do their job. You're there to get something out of them. It's a mutually agreeable relationship. So don't feel that you're being rude or you need to be beating around the bush to get to the point. But that being said, do be courteous and be polite and then do your research, find the exact position you want, have a spiel about why you think you fit the job well, why you think your resume should be looked at, why you feel you need to get the interview. Let them know why you're passionate about the company. Company. Keep it short and concise and then just send it to them so that if I am a recruiter and I look at an email from you, I'm like, okay, hi, this person has this background. They want to work in this company on this position because of this, 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 this. And I seem to agree with it. So let's schedule them for an interview or based on what I read, I don't think so. And you move on. So nobody's time is wasted, right? Like I think that's the best approach, but do remember to be polite, courteous, and be respectful of their time. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of a lot of things. I'm actually afraid of being on camera. Every time it's the filming day, I get stressed out and my palms get sweaty. It takes a lot of nerves and I'm still not confident on camera. I try every day, but I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of failures. I put a lot of effort into everything I do. And while failing is inevitable, you eventually fail and you have to accept failure. Uh, I'm still afraid of it because nobody wants to fail. I'm afraid of being forgotten. Maybe you know someday I'll die and nothing I did or nothing I worked on ever will be remembered and you'll just be some random person that nobody cared existed. I'm afraid of losing the people I love. If I have an interview, I'm scared of the interview, you know, it's like I'm nervous of not knowing what the interviews ask me. I may be on this side of the camera talking to you, giving advice, and you may be on the other side, but we all have the same fears. What is your best advice for a junior developer? Go watch this video that's gonna pop out somewhere here because I made an entire video about that and you should definitely watch it. So yeah, that's it for today. I actually do have more questions here, but I think the video is gonna get too long if I answer all of them. But if you like this kind of video and if you want me to do more of this, maybe once every six months or maybe once every year, do let me know in the comments below. Also put your questions there. So if I do make these kind of videos in the future, I'll pick the questions from there as well. And as usual, like, comment, share, and please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Yeah.